Hi there, welcome to the workshop. My name is Eric and I'm going to talk to you today about my virtual pipe organ. Yes, virtual pipe organ, there's a concept. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this the old-fashioned way. I'm going to point the camera at the screen and I'm going to show you how I did this. Um, one thing you've probably already noticed about my videos is that there's no fancy uh, studio editing involved. There's no real software that I'm using to do this and uh, no mixing or anything. So, hey, it's clear, cut, dry, pretty simple. I hope you like that style. That's what you get. So, uh, let's move on. So, welcome to my virtual pipe organ. This is a photograph, obviously, um, or maybe not so obviously. Um, what I wanted to do is just talk about this project um, before we get to the nitty gritty and get some performing in there. Um, so, what is virtual pipe organ? So, uh, interesting concept. It's something that's been around for a few years only uh not a whole long time um how to best describe this thing so you know in the realm of classical music uh, i mean or organ is one of the oldest instruments if well it's one of the oldest instruments in classical repertoire that's been around for over about a thousand years in one form or another uh became popular in liturgical music cathedrals, church, um, and then classical performance, there's actually quite an astounding amount of classical organ repertoire available, um, almost as much as there is for piano. Um, unfortunately, organ music is a bit of a dying um, genre. It's very, very um, particular now these days, and... Um, finding an instrument of this type is kind of hard to come by, or at least the pipe organ is, because they are usually in churches, uh, congregations. They're very expensive and large instruments, um, and uh, they're hard to maintain, you know, or I should say costly. So um, what you're looking at, I'll, I'll give you a bit of a background story on this, but this is this is a console of an organ that came out of a church. So... The background story on it is, um, you know, it had been many years since I played. I'm classically trained. I had some formal um, and informal training in my college years. And um, um, I played while I was in California. I played uh, as a substitute organist in New York City. Um, and um, it had been almost 20 years since I've played an organ. And so, um, generally, where I live, uh, if you've seen my other videos, um, there's not a whole lot around. <laughs> I'll just leave it like, like that. It's wonderful. I wouldn't change it for the world. But anyway, <clears throat> there's no cathedrals around where I live and no pipe organs. But I was sitting in a um, cabin I was living in and listening to a, a YouTube video of a guy playing um, the J.S. Bach Symphonia um, in D. And um, I just thought, you know, how wonderful would it be to play organ again? And I felt touched at that moment. You know, like the universe heard my, my desire. Uh, now, of course, like, you know, where I live... Well, how is that going to happen? So um, the following weekend, I was at a, generally it's a thrift store, um, and I came across this organ console. Blew my mind away. You know, here I am in rural Colorado thinking about 
classical organ music and then I come across a classical organ in uh, in a store. It, it was salvaged, lovingly salvaged from a church. So um, I found it, I bought it, it weighs weighed about a thousand pounds. I stored it and when I moved into this house I had it brought over it sat in my garage until winter was over and i set everything up and um did a little research on this this is a, a rogers cambridge 220 um organ console um, late 70s early 80s uh, which surprised me seeing how in such good condition a console is um not a fan of the stop tabs. I prefer the pull stops, but you know, I can't complain. Um, the, the organ needed work. Uh, it was playable. The sound was awful. Um, you know, if you're familiar with 1970s, 80s electronics, I mean, it's just, it's something that should no longer exist. So I kind of started looking into options. It was gonna cost $1,500 um, just to pay for the technician's door-to-door -door, uh, uh, fee for driving from Denver to Western Colorado, and including room and board. And that doesn't include any of the service time or components that may require fixing and all that just to get back some subpar electronic sound. Well, I had a dilemma. Um, and um, being that the organ was lovingly salvaged, um, I didn't want to harm it, but um, doing some research, I found something that would have given this organ new and greater life. And that was the virtual pipe organ route. So what is a virtual pipe organ? There's obviously no pipes there, but it sounds like a pipe organ. So technicians, sound technicians, these guys go into these cathedrals around the United States and, and Western Europe and maybe even Eastern Europe and they digitally sample every note, every pipe from multiple locations in the cathedral, digitize it, they put it in a software. You, I buy the software, or download it for free depending who you go for, um, and install it on my laptop. Well, now I have a 17th century Baroque pipe organ, uh, fully functional on my laptop. Um, and, and so I can play that organ with absolutely magnificently um, digitized sound um, from this organ console. And I have different speakers there now and uh, hooked up several more and get quite a phenomenal sound. Now, the thing about this is that um, this organ was pre-MIDI, you know, this was all vintage electronics. I relieved it of several hundred pounds of electronics. And um, it was kind of something hard to do, but um, what I did was I left the, the wire bundles coming from each manual and um, the pedal board uh, intact. And um, so basically I had to midify this instrument. If you're not familiar with it, MIDI is Musical Instrument Digital Interface. So this instrument went from a fully functioning, all byte, um, subpar sound quality instrument to MIDI. Now all those key, keys you see on the keyboard and pedal board, they're just on and off switches. That's all that it is. So again, I've relieved the instrument of several hundred pounds of electronics and replaced all of it with a half of pound um, circuit board. So. Um, the instrument was now midified, and uh, then that's connected from a, a MIDI connector to USB into the laptop, then audio out from the laptop into an amplifier, which in my case is a stereo, and then from the stereo to speakers. Um, great sound. Um, I'm going to move on to the next picture here. So what, what does this... Um, we have an encoder card. So um, this encoder card, this is M MIPC 1A keyboard stop mini encoder. You need one card for um, 
um, each function you need a card for a manual so if you have a two manual like I do you need two cards there's another card that's slightly smaller that's made for um, the pedal board um, and you also need a card for any stops as well as presets I I think there might be presets capable on this card uh, this card will also do your crescendo pedal and swell pedal um, those so um, I'm going to skip ahead real quick here um, to show you what I, I used was a uh, AMP connectors. Sorry. Um, uh, well, I'm not sure where that picture went. So um, I basically hooked these up. These, these here are all the um, keys and they're lettered from C1 octave by octave. Um, and then you can tell the card by uh, toggle switches the logic of what it's doing okay you have your power to the card and you daisy chain them from card to card <coughs> these are your ports for the uh, MIDI connection um, and then these up here are your um, stops and um, up here is the portion where you would put in your um, Uh, volume pedal. Uh, sorry, it was about a month or two since I've worked on this and I'm already forgetting this stuff, um, which is not good because I have more work to do on my instrument. I have all my notes connected. Um, I do not have the swell pedal or crescendo pedal uh, hooked up to it as of yet. I'm kind of testing the waters and seeing how everything is before, you know, I continue on the next step. So uh, the next picture here is uh, by the way I, I need to tell you I'm using DTS MIDI systems.com I really enjoyed working with this guy and uh, from my own research I found that this was the best product on the market um, a little pricey but it's well worth it I mean um, there's a lot of good products out there you can buy them in steps and stages all in all however this is a one and all card it does everything so um, you want what this card does, um, you're going to pay the same amount. Um, this is all together on one card. This card, um, these systems that these, this place offers, um, this is professional grade stuff. You know, I didn't have to go this route, but I figured, you know, I'm classically trained. I'd like to get back into performing. I'm going to, you know, invest my money well. Um, this stuff is not just for, you know, a part-time musician playing virtual pipe organ at home, but this is the kind of equipment they will use to midify um, actual pipe organs in cathedrals. So there are, there are large organs um, using the same card and um, a lot of the other systems they have they have stuff that will control anything and everything including the swell box um, the shutters on the swell box everything can be digitized and i think they did a magnificent job the engineering is great the surface mount parts are superb um, and um, this is just a top-notch quality so let me please um, give a bow and a wave to the dts midi systems.com here um, this is one of the customers that um, this guy had, and uh, I don't know his name or where this cathedral is um, or church is, but um, you know they did a great job on this instrument. This is a pipe organ, uh, and it is a Rogers just like mine. However, it was also um, pre MIDI, um, and so this guy had to um, wire, and I did this. Um, you cut the bundle of wires that go to the vintage electronics. And um, I guess there's a different, there's different ways to do this. But what I had to do is I had to take that bundle of wire, hook the um, positive onto uh, the common wire, the positive rail uh, along each keyboard, and then just pick up a random wire uh, and I know it belongs to one particular manual, and then I'm pretty pretty fast as a keyboardist, and I'll run chromatically up the keyboard 
and um, um, using my multimeter, I'll, I'll see when the needle moves, I've hit that wire. I know what node it is, each wire got labeled, and each wire then got placed on a pin and onto the encoder card. So, um, so these are the bundle, the wire bundles here that I'm talking about. This is a three uh, manual, and um, so he's got three different bundles going to three different cards, and there's his pedal right there. And um, the, the um, integrity is absolutely superb. Um, um, I, I wish I had taken the, the time to do that in my instrument, but um, I kind of did and I kind of di didn't as far as bundling out this way. Um, unfortunately, I cut the wire in a way that, you know, I had a little bit less space. But it is the design that I did go through. Here's a better look at what he did here. And um, so there is a common wire, and that common wire you'll see does go to the positive on each um, power pole here. Um, and then the negative side, the key is the switch, the negative side goes into the respective um, pin. And um, when the pin is depressed, I'm sorry, when the key is depressed, then you get the code, and then the, the LEDs will start blinking and communicate with the computer thus signaling the, the, the digitized voices. So um, th there's mine. I'm sorry. It just, it looks like hell. It looks like spaghetti, but um, it's in, it's in very good or order. Um, they're latched on there pretty well. I can still move around to get in there because I still need to attach my um, swell and um, crescendo pedals. And uh, I don't have to buy replacement pots, uh, potentiometers for those because uh, I think if it's a 10 ohm, uh, if I got that correct, it will uh, digitize just fine. And it will, it will happen on the same cards that you see there. So that's, that's my instrument there. Um, amazing, that's probably, like I said, a half a pound of uh, circuitry versus um, two or three hundred pounds that I, I took out of it, including transformers and oscillators and all sorts of stuff like that. So um, so this is part one of the video for my virtual pipe organ. I hope you enjoyed this and found this fascinating so far. Um, the next steps I'll go into depth a little bit more in regards to um, the electronics and how I hook them up. And uh, we'll get some uh, samplings for you of my playing as well. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, looking forward to chatting with you some more. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>